Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of this course property materials. Let us just do a brief uh, uh, recap of uh, last lectures contents. So, in the last lecture we looked at the values of modulus, modulus of elasticity versus bonding for different materials. So, we saw that E of ceramics is generally higher than E of metals most okay, and, and this is higher than E of polymers and this is basically related to decreasing bond energy which is also manifested in decreasing melting point and coefficient thermal expansion okay. and then we saw that how can one design newer materials or let us say different class of materials, different class or newer okay, materials uh, by mixing two contrasting phases or materials. So, this, this concept of composite by the way it is not a very new concept. So, for example, if you look at a steel, okay, steel is a composite it is an, it's a composite of iron which is alpha iron and Fe 3 C. So, here alpha iron is basically the matrix and Fe 3 is the reinforcement. Okay. So, this is the soft phase and this is the hard phase and these blend of these two in a steel. So, the proportion of these two is changed. So, proportion V m y V f can be altered by, by changing percentage carbon in steel okay. and that also changes the properties. So, this leads to change in the uh, E or y sigma y which is yield stress. So, so this is a composite which is which is basically when you mix iron and carbon melt it and make steel you will get a composite. So, this is what happens in, in a material like steel whereas, here we are making composites which are sort of artificial composite in some sense by mixing polymers with ceramics. or metals with ceramics. You can have other combinations as well, but we will we'll, we'll primarily deal with this metals and polymers with ceramics. So, these ceramics are called as either polymer matrix composites where polymer is the matrix. and other is called as metal matrix composites here metal is the matrix and matrix is basically you can say is the continuous phase. Okay. And this is basically because, because you would like the matrix to be tough and ductile so that matrix does not crack up on loading. So, now let us take an example. Okay. Let us say we choose a uh, polymer 
with modulus of uh, let us say E 1 of uh, I do not know 2 G P A let us say and then we choose a ceramic which is modulus of let us say 300 G P A and let us say volume fraction of polymer is 80 percent and volume fraction of ceramic is 20 percent. All right. Now, let us see what is the modulus and this is let us say first is the ISO strain condition. Okay. Assuming that it is ISO strain condition, we get E c is equal to V 1 E 1 plus V 2 E 2 and this is 0.8 into 2 plus 0.2 into 300. So, you can see that this is 0 0.1 sorry 1.6 plus you will get 60. Okay. So, this will be 61.6 GPA. You can see this value is much higher than the value of ceramic. So, you can see that the modulus of modulus of elasticity of composite is significantly improved and so it is anywhere closer to let us say aluminum, very close to aluminum. Okay approaching aluminum value of uh, uh, mod, aluminum value of model of uh, elasticity. If you look at the values for ISO stress condition, then we can see that 1 over E is equal to V 1 over E 1 plus V 2 over E 2. So, E will be equal to essentially E 1 E 1 into E 2 divided by V1 E1 plus sorry V1 E2 plus V2 E1. So, you can see that this is 300 multiplied by 2 and this is divided by 0 0.8 into 300 plus 0 0.2 into uh, 2. So, this is 600 divided by 240 plus 0.4 so, essentially it is almost equal to 300, 600 divided by 240, okay, which is nothing but 5 divided by 2, which is nothing but 2.5 GPA. So, you can see that there are different configurations lead to different increase in the value. So, if you have iso strain condition under, under those conditions the increase in modulus will be substantial whereas for iso stress condition the increase in modulus will be uh, marginal or moderate depending upon the volume fraction and values of modulus. So, this is how you can design composites by mixing two materials of different elastic properties and achieving a value which is higher than the uh, lower of one of the lower phase uh, lower value phase. What this can also what you can also do is that you can al also calculate the net um, net specific net density of the material. Since polymers and ceramics have uh, polymers of course are lighter, ceramics are a little heavier. So, you can calculate the net density of the material and then look at the what is the value of a specific modulus that is modulus per unit weight or modulus per unit density uh, you can calculate. So, so, one can also convert this into specific modulus which is modulus per unit weight. Okay. So, we will we'll, we'll finish this discussion on composites here. The idea was to tell you that if you have these materials with contrasting properties, how can you mix and match things. There are other factors which also leads to change lead to change in the modulus. The other factors are uh, you can also change the modulus by alloying. And this is generally something which is done with the metals, metals and alloys. Okay. So, essentially, so the best example you can see is the you know is, is, is iron itself. So, you have pure iron which has lower modulus as compared to uh, iron carbon which has higher modulus. But this is mainly because mainly because of formation of uh, hard phase which is the, the, the iron carbide phase as I showed you here. So, hang on yeah this is the iron carbide phase which is harder. 
Now, you can you can increase the modulus again without making a sec, uh, the hard phase that is if you look at for example of copper zinc okay so you have pure copper where the bonds of are copper copper type you have pure zinc where bonds are of zinc zinc type but if you have cuzn you may have bonds of copper copper type, you may have bonds of Cu Zn type and you may bond have bonds of Zn Zn type. So, these three different bonds will have three different bonding properties as a result bond energies and this will lead to changes in the changes in the modulus of elasticity due to changed bonding environments and hence bond energies. Okay. So, this will show, uh, so for instance there is a possibility that when you mix these elements together sometimes mixing of these elements lead to formation of as we saw structure of materials in, in the structure materials course that sometimes these elements can form intermetallics. So, wh when they form intermetallics, so suppose when you mix elastic modulus as a function of let us say uh, this is modulus elasticity, this is percentage uh, let us say um, uh, alloying element. So, let us say you have A and you are mixing B. There is a possibility that you start with E A you may increase the value of E at certain point then decrease. So, this E A E max, so this is let us say B 1, okay. this is E max, this could be due to either an intermetallic phase which is stronger. or formation of strong bonds of other type that is more A B A B bonds than A A or B B bonds. So, A if A B bond if E A B is larger than E A A or E B B then naturally when you have a certain combination of A and B, when there will be more A B bonds you will have and this will also depend upon whether you form ordered structures or disordered structures. So, ordered or disordered structures. So, basically what I wanted to point out is alloying is intentionally done to change the bonding environment in, in the materials which can also lead to sometimes formation of different phases which are stronger as a result you may have changes in the uh, modulus of elasticity of materials. So, this is one thing that is done, second thing is structural anisotropy. So, because modulus is a modulus is a is an anisotropic properties property. So, E let us say along C could be different than A than B. Okay. So, what you may do is that let us, so if you have let us say a polycrystalline material, in which all the grains have random orientation. So, let us say U V W some some direction So, let us say this is random orientation. So, this is some direction U V W. Okay. So, random orientation will mean that you will have E average. However, let us say if you are able to align these grains in such a manner so that
and this is what UVW is like. So, this is UVW. So, this is basically you can say it is a textured material and if you if E UVW along that direction is high then obviously, you will get high modulus at least in this direction for the material. So, you can create this structural anisotropy by creating these microstructures which will lead to for, uh, material having different properties along different directions and you can engineer them to your advantage. So, this is what is the overall discussion on um, atomic models of elasticity is. Now, what we will do is that we will move on to the next part which is uh, next part of elastic behavior of materials is basically n elasticity. Okay. So, let me just briefly recap what we have done up to this point. We have looked at the modulus of elasticity using Hooke's law uh, and then we will also looked at sort of a simple a model to uh, simple simple relation between elastic properties to work out how the shear modulus, elastic modulus, bulk modulus are related to each other and the Poisson's ratio. And then we looked at the, the atomic model of modulus, how modulus is related to uh, the equilibrium separation and the bonding and, and how strong and how uh, low energy and uh, lower bond energy and high bond energy materials have different moduluses. How can you tailor the modulus by doing alloying and texturing? How can you make materials such as composites where you can mix and match two different materials to achieve a modulus which is higher than the uh, lower phases modulus and so on and so forth. So, now what we are going to look at look at the phenomena of an elasticity in materials which is uh, which occurs in certain classes of materials and we need to understand how does it do. So, basically what happens is that what we have seen until now is. So, let me just rub this first. So, what we have seen until now is when you have stress strain when you apply this stress, so this is the linear region and before it converts into a non. So, up to this point we have, so let us say this is A, this is B. So, this is the the linear region and here we have assumed that, so assumption was that strain is created or developed as soon as stress is applied. So, basically we are saying that development of a strain is spontaneous all right. So, we are saying that it is So, this is a general elastic behavior that we observe okay, or that we talk about. So, let us say this is general elastic behavior that we generally talk about. However, there are, inst there are instances where where stress application and strain generation could be at different time scales. So, essentially let us say you apply this is a material, you apply stress to it sigma the material increases to certain length. So, let us say this is delta 1 in time t 1 and then, then you stop loading, then you stop increasing the stress, the material further extends to this magnitude delta 2 after time 2 t 2. And as you release the load depending upon the release rate of the load, 
this strain reverses to zero strain situation in certain time. So basically what we are saying is that the strain that develops in the material is not spontaneous, it depends upon the rate at which you apply the load. So essentially what we are saying is that the strain development in the material is time dependent. So if you apply stress very fast, it does not develop uh, to the value uh, to the to the to the maximum value and uh, and if it immediately release the load you do not achieve the full strain. So, basically strain developed in the material is time dependent and this is called as n elastic behavior. Okay. So, we will see that what it is in, in a little more details in next few minutes. So, basically we are saying that strain does not develop in the material at the same time when the stress is applied and this could be related to various phenomena in the material and these phenomena could be diffusion related, it could be related to let us say migration, thermal migration let us say. and then it could be related to, it could also be related to let us say relaxation and so on and so forth. Okay. So, so basically you can say that there is in, in, in most cases what we observe is what is lag of strain after stress is applied and this also leads to a phenomenon of as we see is called as damping. So, damping in materials is mainly because of lag of strain after stress is applied. So, what happens generally is when you when you apply monotonic loading, let us say and monotonic loading is let us say isothermal. Okay. So, isothermal means the sample temperature increase. So, this is the sample you apply stress, you apply stress such that the temperature of the sample does not change. So, this is you increase the stress without change in the sample's temperature. In that case, when you apply stress versus, so if you plot stress versus strain, it follows up to certain point, let us say from A to B, this is the elastic region. So, this is the increase in stress. So, this is the sort of start of plastic point and when you release it, you come back along the same path. Okay. So, this process is isothermal and there is no dissipation of uh, any energy whatsoever. So, whatever is the work done in the loading stage, so work done in loading stage or let us say elastic work not word, then in loading stage is equal to elastic work recovered in unloading stage. So, that is there is no dissipation of energy that is what it means here. Now, what happens in, uh, in case of anelastic behavior is and this basically the strain is completely recovered. So, you go from 0 to let us say epsilon or E i. So, this is let us say sigma 1, sigma i and this is E i. Okay. So, you go to E i from 0 to E i sigma 1, sigma i and then you come back to, so sigma i applied, sigma i released. 
However, what might happen in, 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 in the materials is that so this is the isothermal behavior let us say let us keep this as our benchmark and this is E i. What might happen in material is let us say if you strain the material in such a manner so that let me just use a different color maybe yeah. So, let us say this is the stress sigma i e i. So, let us say if I strain it like this, this is sigma i, I do not go up to the whole value of strain, I go to up to a value of let us say e 1 and then I have to leave for certain time to achieve this strain and then again when I drop the stress at the same rate at the rate which is shown here. So, this is 1, this is A, B, C, D. So, I go from A to B, I do not achieve this strain E 1. So, I have to wait for some time to let the strain be achieved to E i because that is the isothermal strain. And then from this point C, I drop the stress back to 0 level coming to point D. Again the strain which is released during this point is this much amount of strain which is similar to this strain roughly. And then from this, so from this point to that point again, you have to wait for the material to come back to 0 strain. So, this is basically is related to change in the temperature of material. And as we will see in the next lecture, how does this, what are the, what are the mechanisms and processes responsible for giving this kind of behavior. So, this is essentially you can say is the N elastic behavior and this is you can say is the normal elastic behavior and we will see the microscopic mechanism and thermodynamic reasoning behind it in the next class. So, what we have done in this lecture is we have looked at an example of how do you develop design a composite with different properties by mixing the two materials and then we have started our discussion about and then we also saw how, how can you change the modulus of materials by alloying, by alloying materials with different elements or by texturing, by creating uh, grains of different configurations to give rise to um, uh, materials with different moduluses. And then we have initiated our discussion on elastic behavior in materials, which is basically about development of a strain after the stress is applied in a certain period of time. So, it depends upon the rate at which you apply the stress and strain lags the stress basically. Okay. It is like current lagging the voltage in case of dielectrics. Here you can say that strain lags the stress in, in these materials after you apply the stress. So, strain, strain development is not spontaneous, it needs some time. And we will see those microscopic understand that in the next lecture. Thank you very much.